All right, so a couple key things you need to know when using the USB license for the Machine Simulator 4. Um, you're gonna have to, if like for instance, for my case, I'm on a virtual machine. So this is again using VMware. So this is a virtual machine and it's not my host. So I, if I plug in the USB, I need to make sure that I actually accept that that, that USB license or that USB, de USB device will be accepted and used by this actual uh, virtual. Now with that said, now if I open up Machine Simulator, I will have a valid license because it does recognize that that USB is connected to that virtual. So when I press any key right here and I go down to the very bottom left hand corner, you can see that it says no user info, but it does not say no license. Um, so then therefore we can still go to machines we can do whatever we want to um, as far as going to machines seeing all the machines seeing all uh, you know everything load in real quick uh, the settings again going into settings i've changed my visual settings to my max frame rate is going to be 90 frames per second um, you can change your resolution if you want to if you want it smaller than that um, that's perfectly fine to, as far as I'm concerned, as far as the uh, resolution, you can change you like different settings at graphics. So this uh, adds graphic effects right here. You can change that. Uh, the bloom, it, you know, just going to make the glow effect, you know, so you can change this uh, just to make things a little bit faster. Shadows, do you want the medium? None. Uh, so we don't really care about shadows or we do care about shadows, right? Um, it depends on how you want your visual effects then save your changes and then you will save what you have so at that point you can come over here and let's just start the uh, just a little demo the one that you know I've, I've, I did in the past in the very first bit you know very first programming video I did for uh, the machine simulator but you can see the way this works and also to view the IO right so you can see the, how the IO works if you look on the very uh, top hand left right hand corner you can see the photo eyes flagging you can see the in the uh, left hand corner you can see that the uh, which can which direction the conveyor is running right so now we can change this to in normal time slow motion uh, we can change uh, this, you know very fast three times the speed just to make sure that our system is working and that's a good way to test your graphical um, how how well you got your graphics set on your your actual virtual machine or your host um, because if, again you don't have good really good graphics at all you might want to slow this thing down but I am sharing about eight gigs of data um, for from my my uh, graphic card to this but keep that in mind so that that does show that that does work you can pause it um, there's keys right here. You can tell the keystrokes. It does tell you what you can do. Restart the machine. Uh, we're going to exit out real quick. And then we'll come over here and then you can see. Uh, but like I said, I just wanted to show like some, some key things that to do, especially when using the USB license. It's very important to understand that. Uh, again, you got help files um, you can, that you can always go to and stuff like that too. Um, Let's go home and this just shows you, you know, the things down here. So let's go to the help files that pulls up the instruction manual right here. You can tell that that's a complete software guide and this is going to be a quick guide, right? So if you wanted a quick guide to install or you can pull that up, see how different things work and kind of understand too. Also too, I want to uh, highlight one thing too. In if you already have pre-existing drivers, um, and I'll show you this too, like for instance, you go to your NERTEC folder in your C drive, and you go to machine simulator and drivers, you see I've added my pre my configuration, my OPC configurations in here, and what I did is I just basically copied them from what I had before. So in that, that whole talk, let's say, right here in machine simulator 3 because I already had that um, I'm not sure if I had all my drivers in this one yeah, it looks like I did but again you can tell I just copied them over 
So again, that's a, a key thing when you're upgrading the software. You need to like if you ha already have pre-existing like drivers and stuff that you've set to communicate with your PLCs or with your virtual PLCs or or w with your software that you you currently using Machine Simulator with. You know you can translate and use the same configurations so just do that by going into the folders and again by drivers I always save my drivers so if you look uh, I'm gonna go into my easy PLC folder and you can see I have all of my configuration drivers so what I do and this is just my best practice is that I go on to my actual USB drive that has my license from that I ordered from NerdTech and I put a folder on here I added a folder called drivers and I put all of my custom drivers that I've made and you can tell how long I've been doing this right how long I've been working with them roughly about three years because 2001 some of these drivers are 2001 some of these drivers are, are um, 2002 some of them you know are, are even later so again when it comes on to it you're gonna start seeing more drivers get developed from me at least but I just wanted to show you what I, my best practice on where I keep my stuff, right? So when you do, you know, start using the software, you know where to go, right? So then we can go back to machines and then machines are loaded. Uh, you can just like scroll over, you know, like say for instance, you want to just scroll over like this and look at a different example. Uh, let's look at this. Here's another cool one I like, you know, and, and things like this are challenging too, right? So just keep that in mind. Um, you want to challenge yourself. These are things you can do, right? So it's going to scan it. It's going to tell it where to go. Similar, very, very similar. If like somebody works in Amazon, this is something that they have, right? Or any packaging distribution center, um, even even like luggage and stuff like that in, in airports, they're, they're going to do very, very similar stuff like just like this. And again, we can view the I.O. We can tell what it's doing. Um, we can pause it, right? If you want to pause it, you can pause it. You can speed it up. You can speed up the speed. You can see that if you did slow, you can slow it down so you can get a, a good interpretation of what's happening. But again, that's a, a, again, just another key thing about this whole thing is like being able to challenge yourself and being, uh, you know, proficient in, in PLC programming or, P, or even troubleshooting in, in that ma manner. I mean, it really is a valuable thing to have a piece of software just like this. Again, I've been working with it for the better half of three years and I spoke very highly of it then, but now this upgrade and things are, are tremendously better, right? You have faster OPCs, uh, the machines and stuff like that. You easily see they pop, the machines pop in Right, you got your help files. You got everything you need right here. Who credits the software? Um, you got your settings right here. So it's really more intuitive and very like really simple to use compared to what it it was before. Now it was easier to use before, but it's just now. I mean, it right now it's it's even more simple and it's going to get better, right? So this is just the next iteration of the software. So Machine Simulator. This is uh, actually version 4.1. So they're on major revision four and the minor revision one. So they'll, they'll keep upgrading the minor revision and making sure that they get all the communication bugs worked out. But again, they've added so many communication drivers. If your software is not working in here, like again, I, I've used Siemens with this, Rockwell. Um, I've used Rockwell, um, the Ec Logic, Logix Echo. Um, just different things with this. I mean, so there's there's not a, a variance. I've used emulator with it, of course. Um, you've seen me make many, many videos using the machine simulator software. But again, this is called Machine Simulator Suite now. So by Nertech Studios. So just keep that in mind. Um, again, it's something that I'm not going to stop using. So I just wanted to make another video and show you the key components of how I, I get around and when I, when I do upgrades and what I do. So hopefully that did help you and we'll see you guys on the next one.